Hello everyone, my name is Brianna and um, today's video will be on successful tools for online learning. A little bit about me is that I have a Bachelor's of Business Administration with a ma ma uh, major sorry, of Computer Information Systems. Um, I'm currently in my Master's Program for Educational Technology, both at WMU. Go Broncos. Um, some of my professional experiences, I've had some database management work. Um, I've done some web design. I love making websites and some help desk work as well. So the course today, uh, we'll just talk about tools. Um, we'll start with the introduction. We'll talk about collaboration tools, activities, um, feedback tools, and then we'll do a quick recap. So our first lesson um, will cover that intro and tips for online implementation. So when, when talking about um, online learning, it takes place over the internet and it is a form of distance learning and distance learning is any form of learning that does not take place in a traditional classroom. Um, it is convenient, affordable, effective, and um, resources that you can use to implement within your online learning are ebooks, your traditional textbooks, um, journals, online journals, recorded lectures of yourself or another educator, um, just to have a little mix up there and have those interactive sessions. Um, when structuring online learning classes, you definitely want to have different types of um, interactions. You want to have those regular assignments. You want to have discussions. You definitely want to have journals. You can have your regular exams. You want to keep those group projects in there. Um, maybe throwing video, audio clips, podcasts, um, things like that. You want to make the learning, envi act, uh, learning environment sorry, active. Um, so that the learners are constantly engaged in doing something that's keeping their attention. We definitely take a look at the lesson chunking, um, which means that we take the lessons and make them smaller, um, reducing the amount of instruction and, and um, reducing the amount of practice. And that kind of goes with the vertical chunking. Um, the horizontal chunking is basically teaching different points of the lesson on different days, which it does reduce that lesson into smaller parts. With both styles of chunking, we never want to reduce the expectation um, of the student. Um, we just want to kind of condense what we're giving them at a time. Um, we definitely have to be persistent. We definitely um, have to have good time management and kind of instill that in our learners, be effective communicators, have to work on those technical skills as an educator. I know it's hard because technology is hard. Technology is hard to me as a technologist, learning new types of technology. So I can imagine it's hard for someone who doesn't deal with technology, but in order to be successful, you just have to have those skills and they'll definitely pay off again. Just staying motivated, putting yourself in your student shoes, um, having those clear expectations, making your online learning environment a safe space. We want to do continuous improvement, improvement, not only for our learners, but for us as educators as well and blending that pedagogic and andragogic style of learning where pedagogy deals with dim dissemination of information versus andragogy more so making the educator the facilitator of that learning. Um, in our second lesson, we take a look at collaboration, the importance of collaboration and online collaboration tools. So with collaboration, why is it so important? Collaboration facilitates active learning, social learning, higher level and critical thinking, self-management skills, um, and so many, so many more things that um, it facilitates and promotes. And then um, with our online collaboration tools, you can use Google Drive, Edmodo is my favorite, um, Wikis, Wikispaces, 
um, Google Hangouts, Yammer, I mean, whatever works for you. With collaboration, you definitely want to keep it interactive. Um, some strategies you can implement are polling and brainstorming, um, online sites for brainstorming, online games. Um, you want to give the learners a task, give them something to do, be in charge of, um, be invested in, give them something to present or make them the facilitators of something, whatever the project or the activity you choose to create. Um, we definitely want to use triggers, um, polling, giving those whiteboards for interactivity. We definitely want to do our group work um, for collaboration. My favorite is case studies because um, it gives those real world connections, those um, you are you are giving the the student the learner the the essentials to solve a real world problem and it get it makes them more invested um in that project and it makes them more invested in their communities as well um, our third lesson kind of just deals with activity strategies for developing online learning activities and the types of activities so the strategies, um, you definitely want to make sure that your activities include active learning, um, which we kind of went over that before. You want to make sure they're different, um, and we kind of went over different types of activities, assignments, different things that you can incorporate. Um, you want to make sure they are sequential and they build on one another. You don't want your activities to be out of order and confusing um, for your learner, um, especially if the knowledge is a building knowledge. Um, you want your activities to definitely incorporate feedback um, and there should be stops where, and where the students and learners can think and reflect on things that they've learned, how they feel about maybe what they've learned, maybe they felt something could have been different. Um, so you definitely want to have those stopping points. Um, some activities that you can do are your group projects, presentations, love presentations, web quest, um, even as we're at home learning right now, pose a question, get um, some websites and give questions that get information from those websites so that your learners are going on a web quest um, for information they're learning but they're also learning how to use technology they're learning how to research things um, you can do the interviewing and um, so um, example activities as far as within each category um, for content interaction you can do your live lectures um, assign reading uh, for an activity you can do your project-based learning where those case studies kind of can play a hand um, production um, one minute papers or the turn of tables. I love turn of tables where the student becomes the educator or instructor and it kind of takes pressure off of the educator and it gives you a chance to understand how your learners are learning and it gives you a chance to see if they're actually mastering the material that they need to be mastering. Um, with problem solving, um, we have the case studies again, the simulations, critical thinking, um, the digital story development. Um, we definitely want to incorporate their reflection activities for self-reflection, reflection on what they've learned, um, what they're learning, and what they have learned. Um, you can also use the digital story for both of those. So looking at um, the fourth lesson here, we kind of want to go over the importance of feedback and strategies um, to provide feedback with online learning. So the importance of feedback, it provides engagement for the learner in their learning process and in their learning progress, um, gives them a uh, a way to know where they're at and where they need to be. Um, it's a potential area of self-improvement, uh, reflective practice, prov 
promotes self-motivation and it definitely encourages constructive discussion between the facilitator and learner, especially for shy learners or learners who aren't comfortable expressing that they don't know something or you know, have those type of uh, communication issues. So it shows that you are invested in your students. It shows your students that you're invested in their learning. Um, and it, it makes a difference when you're talking about successful learning environments. So strategies for providing um, online feedback is you can use the verbal feedback, the audio podcast, um, comments and word. Um, my professors, they use comments and words for assignments, Jing, um, YouTube, Snagit. I'm using Snagit for this video. I've used Jing for some other ones. You can do the peer review. Um, frees you up and sometimes it's better or it's different to hear something from a peer than it is from the authoritative figure in the room. Emails, rubrics, um, voice threads. So we definitely want to make sure when we are providing feedback online that it is frequent. You don't want to have a student going to the next assignment doing the same thing wrong when they should have been corrected on the first assignment. You want to make sure you're giving it frequent and at the time that it's needed. needed. Um, it needs to be positive, constructive, meaningful, um, definitely specific, and balanced. You, all, you want to give that negative and that positive feedback. Um, Praise and but you also want to let them know where they can have um, room for improvement and growth. Um, we kind of went over it timely again. And um, just to recap here with online learning, it is learning that takes place over the internet. It is distance learning. It's different. Um, and you have to be able to blend the pedagogy and the andragogy. Um, those different styles of learning. Um, you can do that through collaboration, which fosters higher level thinking, critical thinking, problem solving skills, shared knowledge, social learning. Find an online collaboration tool that works for you. And then um, with the activities, we want to incorporate activities that have different type of interactions and different type of tools to facilitate that learning and we want to provide feedback it keeps the learner engaged it keeps them um, aware of where they're at and what they need to where they need to do and where they want to be as far as their learning um, and find an online feedback tool that works for you um, we'll definitely have some resources posted um, to give you kind of more um, more available resources to get this type of information from. And thanks everyone for listening and um, viewing in on the video and you have a good day.